record button. Great. All right. Let me get my stuff up here too. There we are. All right, good evening. And uh, I am very glad to be here with you. I wanna welcome all of you to this practice session for our 2020 Northeastern Pennsylvania Synod Assembly. And uh, I am really glad to be Why serving. Is there a sound on here? Hold on, let me make sure. I see it. Audio there. Uh, I'm really glad to be surrounded not only by all of you, but by good people who are working well and have done some fabulous work to put this together. Uh, so in this evening, you'll be seeing either images or hearing voices uh, of people such as Deacon Travis Woodfield, who is working as our Zoom manager tonight. Uh, and you also hear from uh, Pastor Lauren Wolf Blatt, who is our uh, event uh, director and is also uh, be with us this evening. Chris Druckenmiller is assisting, Pastor Chris Druckenmiller is assisting um, our Deacon Travis Woodfield in the Zoom management tonight and in helping to answer your questions. Uh, Pastor Ken Melber will uh, also be uh, with us in just a moment to take us through this, the voting process. And I'm also here tonight with uh, the person with, that will be uh, leading and, and helping and working with me throughout the Synod Assembly, our Vice President of Synod Council, uh, Kristen Edelman Wiener. Um, we are very glad to get started. And uh, let me first of all say that we will uh, be going over a few things and trying them out. And we'll be doing this step by step, taking our time with this process to make sure everybody's on board. There's a couple of housekeeping things that I need to let you know before we get started. First, we recommend that you use, we recommended and have recommended that you use two devices for this assembly. Uh, one for watching the assembly on Zoom and one for voting when those voting times come up. The ideal solution we've recommended is to have the Synod Assembly and the Zoom signal on a laptop or desktop, and then do the voting from a smartphone or a tablet. So that's item number one, just a reminder. Number two, uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if anything here goes faster than uh, you uh, can keep up with, or you'd like to, to see what we're doing again, we are recording this. So there'll be a YouTube video available online and our uh, in our um, assembly page on our website where you can watch this again. There are also text documents there if you work better from text and you can read through directions for both Zoom operation and also for voting the voting system. Everyone here will be muted until they are unmuted by our Synod staff and they have the power to turn, to, uh, turn the audio on or off for each of you. Uh, so we'll be doing that here from the Lutheran Center, both tonight and then when we do the Synod Assembly as well. And again, if you have any questions tonight, you can put them into the chat, which we'll be talking more about chat in a moment. Uh, but you can put them in a chat and we will answer them by chat. Or uh, if we, uh, a lot of people have the same question, we'll bring it up here on video as well. Uh, so we'll be getting more into chat in just a moment. I'm now going to uh, turn this over to Pastor Ken Melber, who's going to introduce our uh, person who's helping us with e-ballots and take us through the voting process. So Pastor Melber, please take it away. Sure. Um, I do notice a few folks already um, in the chat who are having some issues um, that have not yet received their credentials. Um, I will check those names here in just a moment and we'll make sure that you, you get them. That will come from me. Um, but in the meantime, if you do have email, I encourage you to check your spam folders um, and see if there's anything in there um, from an address called no reply at votenet.com. That's where your credentials should have come from yesterday. Um, just briefly, again, my name is Pastor Ken Melber. I'm from the elections team for the Senate Assembly for this year. As we prepare to practice for our voting function, if you do have that email ready that has the link and your username and password, I'll call your attention to that email at this time. 
Uh, make a note of your credentials. Uh, about halfway down the email, you will see a username and password with a whole bunch of gobbledygook uh, string of, of a couple of letters and numbers that you'll be using to log in. It may be helpful um, if you can, if you've got a pen and a piece of paper to also take a take sort of a low tech note of that. Um, so that regardless of what device you're going to be using for voting, uh, you'll always have that right there in front of you. Um, if you're using, again, a phone, a tablet uh, to check this email, again, it may be helpful uh, to just write that down. Right above your username and password, there is a link that begins with URL, and then you'll see a whole string that says eballot.app slash nepasinet. So that's the link that you want to either click on or push on your, your phone or tablet. That will open the voting portal for you. Uh, once you've accessed that portal, uh, those credentials that you have written down from your email, your username and password, you can enter both of them into whatever device you're using for the voting. And then there's a, a orange login button that will allow you to log in to the voting portal. If for whatever reason, and I see, like I said, some folks in in chat who I, I will assist very briefly here in just a moment. Um, but also, if you've not received those voting credentials, please let us know in the chat. Or again, the tech support email of conference at nepsenate.org uh, will be able to help you out with getting those credentialing information. Um, in just a moment here, I'm going to turn things over to our representative from eBallots for tonight, Madeline Ferris, um, who has been very gracious in helping us get set up um, and fielding a countless number of emails uh, from me over the last couple of weeks. Um, so Madeline will be guiding us to a test vote for this evening. Um, so you will know and be able to see exactly what this is going to look like uh, tomorrow and Saturday. Um, as she does that, I will try to work to get some of you your voting credentials that have not yet received them. Um, so Madeline, I, I believe you're here. I'll invite you to unmute yourself and take over from here. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to try. Uh, would you mind enabling screen sharing so I can take you through the login process? Should be good now. Okay, great. I'll try again. Okay, there we go. Awesome. So uh, I'm just going to log in as if I were a voter. So I've added myself as a voter to this election, which should be open now. Um, so here I have the link, which I can either click on or copy and paste. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste because I find that easiest to a new tab. And then I'm just going to go back and forth between this tab and uh, my username and password. So this is the email you should have gotten. I'm going to copy my username and I believe my password is exactly the same. Yes, it is uh, for both of those. Yours should be different, but mine is the same since I added it manually. I'm going to log in. Now, if I had trouble logging in, there are a couple of things that might have happened, right? If I got um, a message that said invalid password, um, I might have either typed it in incorrectly or I might have copied and pasted um, a space. Sometimes that can happen when you're when you're selecting. So if that's what happens, just go back and check it again um, and try it the opposite way. If I got a message that said there are no active ballots you are able to vote on at this time, that would mean that um, no votes had been called. So uh, tomorrow during the meeting, uh, there will be large chunks of time where you could log in and there wouldn't be anything to vote on. So you'd get that no active ballots message. Um, if a vote's been called and you're logged in, you can click the refresh button up here or click the home button here to be able to see the ballot. Um, and if the some if you've been logged in for a while, you might get logged out. So just log back in with that same username and password. You'll be using that same username and password throughout the meeting, both in this election, uh, this test ballot and in tomorrow's election. Okay, now I'm making my choices. So I'm going to indicate a favorite gospel. I'm gonna go, gonna go Matthew going to click next. Now, if I had a sudden change of heart and I thought actually Luke was my favorite gospel and I need to correct that immediately, I would click edit selection. That would enable me to make a different choice. I'm gonna stick with Matthew and click next. I'm reviewing my selections, I know they're good. Now, the next thing I need to do is click the participant consent box right here. Um, it's basically your digital signature. It means that you looked at your ballot, you're confident um, that you've made the right choices for you. Click participant consent. 
And now I'm able to click this green submit button. And that is it, I am done. If I needed to uh, keep my, um, my vote for my records, um, here's your confirmation number, you could take a screenshot of it. Or if you click view receipt, this gives you a, a fancy little receipt. And if I clicked print here, I would be able to save that as a PDF if I wanted. Um, eventually it'll load, <laughs> All right. Um, so if I clicked save, I could save it as a PDF. I don't need to do that. Um, there's no reason you have to keep your vote record, but if that's something you want, so you can be like, I know I voted for John Smith uh, to the council um, and you wanted that for your records, you could absolutely have that. Um, just something to note, um, when uh, once a vote is no longer active, you'll no longer be able to get back to that receipt. So if you want the receipt, make sure you do it as soon as you um, finish voting. I have two options here. Um, I can either hit home, which will take me back to my completed ballot, or I could have hit logged out, log out, which would take me back to that login screen. Um, and either one of those is fine. Uh, as long as you have your username and password, you can get logged in throughout the meeting. And that is, that is about it. Um, if you haven't logged in already, uh, please go ahead and do that now, just so you can get a feel for the process. And I will stop screen sharing. And while you all are doing that, I am on the admin side gonna go in and see how many votes we've gotten so far, just so I can make sure that they are coming in. That's cool. So Ken uh, and Madeline, is anything else to share about how the voting process works? That is that is everything you need. It is it is super simple. Um, so I see that um, fifty five people have voted so far. So good on you. <laughs> um, and if you're having having trouble getting logged in or anything, make sure you put that in the chat. I see some thumbs up. That is great to see. Um, and then, uh, how long do we want this ballot to remain open for? When we're going to be doing this tomorrow, we're going to do a sixty second period of time. And we'll have a countdown clock for everyone to know that that's happening. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and we'll that will be pretty consistent with that, I would think. Sure, um, but just just for right now, because um, what I can do is pull the results and send them to Ken so that you get a feel of exactly how the um, that process. I think uh, I would like ever let everybody be on a little bit longer and let them have time because some of you are still working on voting. Is that true? Yes, and those, those of you who are in chat who have asked for your credentials, open up the chat. I'm working down the line, um, so you should get a private message from me uh, with that information. So I, I am I'm working working diligently to get to you. Madeline, is there any problem just to leave that open for a little while, and as oh. we get people credentialed in, we can pick that up? Not at all. It's um, right now. It's set to be open for the full hour, um, and then we can adjust that to whatever shorter amount of time um, you want to have. Just keep, let me know when you decide. Okay, let's keep it open for now. And I think that'll let people get themselves in and try to vote. Uh, also, again, you'll be able to uh, watch these instructions and how this worked. If you wanna watch this video again or fast forward through it to find the voting portion, you'll be able to do that once we get this posted up later tonight and it'll be up all morning as well. And our help, our conference at Neep Synod, uh, uh, org will be open to ans ask questions. They'll have a direct line and connection to eBallots and Madeline's team so that they can get specific questions if we end up stuck with anybody or, or can't quite get something worked out. So uh, we will have folks who can take care of that for you throughout our time here so that when we're ready to start our assembly tomorrow um, at two o'clock, uh, it'll give you plenty of chance to uh, work through those, those challenges. Bishop, there was a concern in the chat that one minute is not long enough for voting. Okay. We will we will uh, review each of the votes. It'll seem extremely long for some of the votes that we're doing, especially once we get the group going. But when we start, we might be able to OP, stay open for two minutes or three minutes if we need to. We're going to do a test vote again tomorrow as well. Uh, well, it won't be a test. It'll, our first vote will be the approval of the agenda, uh, and we'll be able to to do that and leave that open and make sure everybody has uh, 
has a chance to be clicking into that. And we appreciate that suggestion and nothing here is gonna be so set in stone that we can't listen and help everybody to be on board. Also being sensitive to the fact that uh, we will also need to keep our assembly moving forward. So we'll, we'll do that balancing act, erring on the side of doing what's right for as many of our voting members as possible. I'm gonna continue now with the script that we have so we can walk you through some of the other functions. If you're used to Zoom, some of this will be fairly familiar to you, but it's good to practice it here in this setting as well. So let me pull this up and forward here. So some of you've already tried this, but typing in chat will be an important function for this assembly. Getting to the chat on a desktop or a laptop involves usually one step if you're working on a laptop or a desktop. On the bottom of your Zoom window, you will see a button that says chat. Simply click on that, then click on the text input box that will appear and type. And when you press enter, it will show in the chat window. If you uh, are using a tablet or a phone to do chatting in Zoom and watching in Zoom, uh, there's just one extra step. To get to chat, you will need to have the menus appear. To do this, you simply tap on the screen, your touch screen, and you will see extra information come up. It will show buttons across the bottom, including one that looks like three dots, dot, dot, dot. Tap those three dots. From there, you, will, you can select chat, and that will come up in a chat window. And again, tap on the tap here to chat and type your message, sending it by pressing the little paper airplane icon to the right of the text. If your message appears in the chat window, it has been successfully sent to Synod staff. Uh, and if you don't get an immediate response, if it appeared in the window, you can be sure that it went through and we'll get to it as soon as we can. So you can try that out as well. If you haven't tried a chat yet uh, and you want to do that, uh, um, as I tell you, just a few other things. For seasoned Zoom users, we will have the chat set up so that it will only come to the Synod. Uh, so for out, throughout the um, assembly, it will go to our Synod Zoom managers. You as participants will only see your chat and what we as the Synod write. This will help you a lot in cutting down the clutter of a large number of comments in uh, the, the chat window. It'll only be the conversation that you have with the assembly manager, with the Zoom manager, uh, if you need help, or if you are working within the, um, the event itself uh, responding, which we'll be talking more about that in just a moment. So we're giving you a second here. Go ahead and try the chat function. If you haven't used it already, you can go ahead and do that. giving you just a moment to uh, send in a chat and it can be just a hello if you have nothing specific to say, just so you can practice chatting. All right, and you can continue that as we move to our next topic. This next thing that we have to go over is the raising your hand function in Zoom. Now, yes, I know, I'm sure that some of you automatically when the term raise your hand comes up physically are ready to raise your hand, right? I do that a lot of times myself as well, especially if I'm called for to do it. But during our assembly, you may wish to raise your hand in this case to make a point of order or to uh, speak for or against uh, a re an issue or a resolution or a, or a motion that's being made. So to do this or any other function that would normally be performed by uh, going to a, a microphone uh, at a uh, in-person assembly, we will be using the hand raising feature on Zoom. The raise hand feature in Zoom is different depending on what version of, a, of the operating system you are currently using. To address this, we'll be showing you two ways to access the raise hand feature. Since we don't know what operating system you are using, just try to follow along as we explain each method 
and see which one works for you. The first method we will be trying goes through the participants feature. So go to the bottom of the Zoom screen where you will find where you found that chat button. And from there, click on where it says participants. That will bring up a menu up on the right. That menu can be kept up at all times if you find that easier. You then will click raise hand on the bottom right of that menu. Clicking it again will lower your hand. If you uh, wish to make a privileged motion during the assembly, you, pre you would raise your hand in Zoom and then type in chat what your motion is. That's how that will work. Now I'm glad to turn things over now to Kristen Edelman Wiener, Vice President of our Senate Council, who will continue this conversation and work on raising hands. She's just being finding her unmute button, I'm sure, and we're unmuting her. And if you need to, like, when you're done practicing, raise your hand. If you turn, if you press it again to put your hand down, that'll put you back in the stack. And at this point, we're not answering questions. Hold on to those questions, and we'll be able to deal with some of them here in just a moment. Right now, All you're right. just practicing. All right, I think I'm unmuted. Can everybody hear me? Bishop, can you hear me? I can hear you, Kristen. Hey, very Absolutely. good. <laughs> good work. All right. Um, well, there was a, there was a, a bit of a, a brief break. I'm just going to talk very quickly uh, about how to do your raise hand uh, in a second way, just in case you didn't already figure it out. But as I'm watching some screens on my uh, my own monitor up here, it looks like just about everybody's got this, but. If you still don't see that raise hand button at the bottom of the participants menu, there's another way to raise your hand. The other raise hand feature can be found as a part of the reactions feature. So look for the reactions button at the bottom of your screen and click on that. A display of different reactions will appear. Uh, and the bottom of the list, there's an option to raise hand Click that option and your hand will be raised and you will be in the queue to speak. If you are on Zoom on a smartphone or a tablet, the process is similar to using chat. You're just going to tap the screen to bring up the menu, tap the three dots on the bottom right, and then tap raise hand. So I know a lot of you have shown us that you can raise your hand, you're doing an awesome job. We'll just give a few more brief moments for anybody else to try it. If you were waiting to figure out um, what your other options were for raising your hand and trying out that function. I'll just wait a few moments more. Everybody can try that out. In the meantime, in the meantime, as you are raising your hand, I'm going to ask a favor of you. All right, here's my favor. Here's my favor. To help us out and better identify you if you wish to speak, either uh, raising a point of order or making a motion on the floor, speaking uh, for or against something, it's going to be really helpful for us if your Zoom name on our screen actually matches your real name. I know many of you already have this and you're all set up already. So you don't need to redo anything, but if your Zoom name is showing up right now, something like iPhone six or Bob's computer, um, it would be awesome if you could just rename yourself. There are two ways to do it. The first way you can rename yourself is again, going back to that participants menu, look for your name and next to your name, click where it says more then choose rename and type in your actual name and click okay. This will change your name for our Zoom session. And that's awesome. Of course, the second way you can rename yourself is by placing your cursor over your Zoom picture. 
And in the upper right hand corner, you're going to see three dots. Click on the three dots and the menu will appear with the option to rename yourself. That's going to be toward the bottom of the menu. Click on rename and a pop-up box will appear. Type in your actual name there and then click OK. And that will change your name in that way for our Zoom session. So if you could do that for us, that would be super. It's good to see you all tonight. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Back to you, Bishop. Thank you, Vice President Edelman Wiener. I appreciate that very much. And so now we're going to have a little bit of instruction on how to interact uh, with each other at the Senate Assembly. So in practice, what will happen is this. If you have a point of order, for instance, uh, you will raise your hand in Zoom and Deacon Travis Woodfield, our Zoom manager, who will be able to get that message to me uh, and will flag me down. We will be able to then spotlight you on uh, Zoom and unmute you, and you will be then queued to speak by me as I call for you to do that. If, however, you wish to speak, now, if we're working on a resolution and you wish to speak for or against that resolution in the time in which we will be doing that, we are asking for one additional step. You will raise your hand in Zoom as above, not actually raising your hand, but in Zoom as above, and then also write your name in chat and whether you are for or against in the chat window. This is so we can alternate the for and against uh, perspectives and maintain good order. You do not need to explain what you are going to say in the chat, only whether you are for or against and your name. Then we will take those as they appear in the hand raising in that order. And when it is your turn, you will be called on and Deacon Travis Woodfield will spotlight you and unmute you at that point. We will afford a reasonable amount of time for people to respond to resolutions in particular. Uh, it may seem sometime like we take uh, occasional longer pauses, but we are making time for people to raise their hand and to type in whether they're for or against, uh, or if it's a privileged motion like a point of order that you type in the point of order and we make sure we can get, uh, get that to the front of the stack and address it immediately. That essentially covers uh, the how-tos and how we're going to do things, uh, not only can you get this recording again and see these instructions written down on our Synod website in the assembly of area, uh, but we'll also be talking more about this and working through these directions again when we get to various points in the program. So we make sure we know that not everybody is here and there may even be a few people that don't get to watch the this video. So we're gonna make sure we take the time we need to make sure everybody is on board as we work um, through the assembly over the next two days on Friday and Saturday. We wanna thank you for coming to this Synod Assembly practice session. We're not done yet because we're gonna make sure there's no immediate questions in chat that we need to address. But keep in mind, if you're having a technical difficulty, if you're having trouble getting on or through things, uh, conference, at nepsynod.org will respond to you. So that's C-O-N-F-E-R-E-N-C-E -E -E at N-E-P-S-Y-N-O-D dot O-R-G. All right. I'm going to ask our, our uh, Zoom manager, Travis Woodfield, to say, is there any particular question that we need to address here tonight that you see from the chat? Uh, that. I did not see anything uh, specific in the chat. Um, I see that uh, Pastor Tom Irwin has been raising and lowering his hand, which uh, is a good sign that that is working. Um, so so and let's practice this here, I think, then I will say that uh, we have received uh, that there's a hand raised by uh, Pastor Tom Irwin, and the chair recognizes Pastor Tom Irwin uh, to present uh, his uh, comment. Okay, not there. Now you're unmuted.
All right. Uh, should I be able to actually see my hand raised in my window? Uh, I don't. Yes. Uh, it's not in this corner over here? No. Or it's not down here in the middle? Don't see it anywhere. This is the okay. hand I can see. That's all I can see. Well, that's, I see a hand there too. Uh, so if you go to the list, on, it's on the right side of my screen. I don't know which way I'm pointing. But you'll see a blue hand next to your name there. And when you raise your hand, your name will jump to the so top of the in, list. In, yeah. So oh, I see it. I see it. Okay. That's a little blue hand, right? right? Uh, now it's, it, it's, being, it's being covered by my more and mute uh, yeah. crud. So uh, uh, Ms. Rodriguez and Mr. Jones and uh, Ms. Ehrlich uh, are all raising their hand. I can see uh, Ms. Anderson has just lowered her hand. Uh, I can see them, and they're all at the top of the list. So there's yeah, 173 I, people, but once you raise your hand, you go to the top of the list, and it gets my attention on the back end. This is interesting, because if I attempt to go to the hand, the mute and more boxes pop up, and I can't get to the hand. You follow what I'm saying? The more box is how you're going to do it. So mm -hmm. click on more. Uh, all right. No. I'm thinking. So one way to do it would be you click on more and it says raise yeah. your hand. The other way that might be is in reactions in the bottom. And it'll be reactions. There's a button there for reactions. And then it'll be raise your hand in there. Now I can only clap or thumbs up or I don't have a raised hand there. Okay, then it's over on the more section. Well, my more is simply uh, rename or edit profile picture. All right, well, I will look at that and we will get back to you uh, tomorrow. Good news is that I saw your hand and I was able to call upon you. So we are seeing it, you're just not. All right, so I assume these are practices, but do we have actual questions that someone wants to speak here? Or are you just practicing your hand raising function? It looks like it's practicing hand function, hand raising. Very good. And if you do have questions, please uh, ask them of conference at neepsynod.org. That will be running also during the assembly. So if you have questions while you're going, you can do that then. Very briefly, Bishop, uh, I, I don't want to steal Madeline's thunder from her, but she can tell me if I'm oh, doing yes. this right as well. Um, from, from what I'm seeing, there are 139 individuals who have completed their vote. Um, now, what we'll, we will have uh, on the actual days of the assembly um, is when it comes time to present the results of a ballot, there'll be a PowerPoint slide um, that will display them for you. Um, but for right now, on my end, I can see um, that there are 35 votes for Matthew, 25 for Mark, 38 for Luke, and 38 for John. Uh, so, so Luke and John are, are both tied for first, and I'll just say I'm proud of you and leave you to guess which one is, is my choice. Uh, but uh, again, you know, you've, you've heard it, and we're probably sick of hearing it by now, but if you have put something in the chat, you should have gotten a response from me uh, with your credentials. If you still don't have anything, again, conference at nepsynod.org uh, so that we can make sure that you're ready to have um, the voting platform ready for you when we begin our first vote tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Travis here. I don't want to belabor this point, but I want to try to address uh, Pastor Irwin's point. So I have I have that slide up. I'm just going to share that real quick and see if that helps uh, Pastor Irwin. Go ahead, share away. So Pastor Irwin, here's the slide for it. Do you see... Um, it's on the it's on the bottom right there on that picture. Uh, I see you pointing in the bottom right. Yep. So, is, do you see raise hand there in your your window? <clears throat> You're muted. Yeah, Try that. There you go. Okay. 
Yeah. I had the participants uh, window open and maybe I was covering my hand with the column of participants. Maybe that's why I didn't see it. I, I can see it now though. My Is that hand? correct? Well, yes, you see the raise hand button there now. We should talk. Maybe I, maybe I misunderstand your question. What's your question, Pastor Irwin? Well, I, I was apparently not getting my hand, uh, seeing my hand on my screen. Okay. Now, I've, just, I've just raised, oh, I should be raised now. Yep. And uh, if I close the participants thing. I killed this. There we go. But I don't see it. I don't know. I just won't ask anything tomorrow. <laughs> We certainly well, don't be, want to shut down conversation for you there, be, Pastor be Irwin. Assured, be assured, Pastor Irwin, that we can see your hand raised. Yeah, so. I absolutely was able to see it, and Travis can see it as well. Bishop, I yes. have okay. some questions from the chat. Please. Um, someone said that they wouldn't be able to come until later in the day, and the form said that they had to come to all of the assembly um, so it is indeed fine if you have to come late, you can still attend the assembly in whatever capacity. Uh, we also had a question about, we had suggested that people use two separate devices. Uh, it will make voting easier, but it is not necessary. You just have to leave, um, at least minimize your Zoom in order to go to the voting, um, but you can do that. It will just it might take you a little bit longer. So the preferred method would be two devices, but if you don't have to, that's okay. Um, several people have asked if we can vote again um, to practice. And uh, that might be it. Okay. Can Other than some- try another, Can you do another vote? You and Madeline? So, so now? Yeah. So okay. we can end that uh, vote and that try another? Give me about 30 seconds and okay. um, is it okay if we use the same ballot, the same question? I would think so. People just want to practice so mm -hmm. we can use, just reset the same one. Uh, and I, I would, I agree with, um, with what uh, Pastor Wolf Blatt was saying there that um, we uh, definitely want people, I mean, if you're representing your, um, people, your congregation, you should come to as much as you can, but circumstances happen in, in person as well. So we understand how that works, but uh, we certainly hope that all voting members will attend as much as possible and be able to vote and participate in the life of the Synod in that way. Uh, the device thing, yeah, I'm so, I'm so glad that you brought that up. So I think we were just describing what could be an ideal practice. But keep in mind too, if you're using it on a phone and you're doing the Zoom, you could reverse those uh, and watch on a phone and do the and do the um, voting on a computer because you get the voting through the email, and so any place you can receive email, you can also vote. And zooming, you can zoom on any device that you wish as well. So uh, we were just describing what probably was easiest for people to do as far as getting a full viewing experience on Zoom at getting a voting experience uh, by having the uh, smaller device. If you have trouble like seeing things on a small device, you can zoom in by using you know, your fingers to, to widen the image on your phone, or you can vote on your, um, on your computer as well if you can make it the image bigger there, and that's fine. This is much easier and less restrictive than the Lumi system we had to use last year because uh, the vote we're doing is less complicated. And so it's a much more um, cross-platform way of doing this. So we learned something from what we did last year. The ballot has been reset, Bishop. So everyone, even if you've already voted, you can go back in um, and practice that voting process again. All right then. So uh, Madeline, you can guide us through that again and let people know what to do. Sure thing. I'm um, just going to give myself a quick sec to get my email set up. Okie dokie. Share my screen. So same as last time. Oh, that is a different ballot. Exit out of that. 
All right, so I'm going to click my link here, ensure that I'm in the right place. Then I'm going to copy my username and my password. Ooh. Um, as, just to give you an right example, now. I'm going to show what. I'm sorry? You could type those in too if you wanted to, if you were looking yes, at it. Yes, I could it. absolutely type them in. I can write them down. Um, what I'm going to do is show you what happens if I, as I've done here, I've copied it, but I've accidentally copied the space before it. Um, before the username. So if I put it in like that with a space here, I would get an invalid login. So if I get that message, I just go back and make sure that I've done it correctly. And it is the same for both the username and the password. For you guys, it's different. For me, it's the same. I'm gonna click login. I'm going to make a decision about which gospel I'm choosing. I'm going to go Luke this time since I gave Matthew love last time. I'm going to click next. If I wanted to change that selection, if I had second thoughts, I'd click edit selection. That would allow me to make a different choice. All right. And since I'm happy with my choice, I'm going to click the participant consent box. If I don't click it, I can't move forward. So I click, then I'm going to click submit. The longest part of this process is waiting for your submission to go through. Um, all right, and that is it. I am done. If I wanted to keep my receipt, I would click view receipt. And I could either take a screenshot or I could click print and then save it as a PDF or print it out. You know, if you if you have a printer at home, I certainly don't, but I don't need to do that. So I'm going to click cancel. I'm going to go back to this other tab. And then if another uh, vote is coming up real quickly, I can click home. But if it's going to be a while, I'll probably click log out and just manually log back in next time. And that is it. We'll just repeat that process with every vote that comes up. As a reminder, if there was no vote and I logged in, I would see there are no active ballots you are eligible to vote on at this time. Very good. We got a bonus vote. Did that allow others to practice well? I hope so. Well, I am very excited to be with you. Uh, I know that uh, Vice President Edelman Wiener and myself are gonna be thrilled to be part of this process as well. Uh, again, if you have continued questions, you can, if you think of questions in the night or tomorrow, please let us know through conference at neepsynod.org and we'll be able to take care of that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I think Travis has at least one more thing he wanted to let me know. What was that, Travis? Yep, there's a question from uh, one of the people. It says, uh, after a new vote is called, and uh, maybe this is for uh, Ken, uh, Pastor Melber, and for uh, eBallots. Uh, after a new vote is called, we have to refresh so that the page gives us new question and choices. Uh, doing so logs us out every time. Is there a way that the system can be set up so that it does not log us out after every question? Well, it shouldn't log you out automatically after every question. Um, that might that might be a setting on your browser. Um, the, it, it is a pretty pretty short one though. It's it's like five to ten minutes. Um, I can put in a request with our tech team to extend the the time but i i don't know that that would be ready by tomorrow morning uh but i can definitely put in that request um you will have to keep uh like refreshing your browser in order to keep it active though as a session does that make sense i found that when i did this on my iphone that uh it would remember when i just started clicking again it would refill so i the the username and login would just pop back in and I'd get back in again. So that, I think if you have a phone that remembers what your passwords and all that are, you can immediately get back in that way. But I would recommend that you all, and we will make sure we allow time. I would recommend that you write your username and password on a good old fashioned piece of paper sitting right next to you so that anytime you might have to enter it again, just in case you have to enter it, you'll have it right there. If it doesn't automatically go in, or if it logs you out in some way for some reason, it's always good to have it right there ready to go. Okay, any other questions in the chat, Travis? 
Uh, I do not see any questions here. Um, one of the people reminded us that you can opt to remember your credentials in whatever browser you're using, whether that's a phone or a computer. So just to, to reinforce what you've said. Okay. Good. So I see three hands raised. Is that uh, is that for questions, or you're just testing, or didn't turn off the raise hand function when you were done? Okay. Does I see um, Lucille? You're nodding. Does that mean you have a question? All right. Then let's uh, recognize Lucille there. Hold on, Lucille, wait just a moment. I'll tell you when you're unmuted, so stand by. And you are unmuted, go. This is Lucille, you're gonna have to press. I'm gonna ask if you can unmute. Oh, there, there you go. did I do oh, yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, how will, we, how will we be able to review this recording um, so, again? Good question, so when this is all finished, yeah, uh, later on this evening, because it takes about an hour for the video to what's called process, then it will be available as a clickable link on our on our um, Synod website under the assembly block, that little orange block that's there on the Synod website. You go there, it'll take you to a YouTube video, but we'll give you the YouTube link in the list there for this practice session tonight. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Sally, I see. Do you have a question as well, Sally Reeser? I think I'm fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, and then I see. Um, all right, I see Lucille Hackett. Do you have a question, Lucille, or? are you just testing your hand wave? Okay, just testing the hand wave. Ben, do you have a question? All right, I'd like to hear Ben Miller then with his hand raised to address his question. Okay, can you hear me? I can. Oh, perfect. Uh, in, the, in the beginning, I was able to, with the chat function, go in and it would chat to everybody. But now when I go over there, it only seems to allow me to direct message a handful of people. Am I yes. doing something wrong or is that the way it's nope. supposed to be? Uh, what It's supposed to be Great. that. Right? What we're doing oh, okay. is, is we want to make sure that everybody is not seeing everybody's message and getting confused in the midst of all this. The only person that sees all the messages is the Zoom manager uh, and and the, the co-manager that are helping us run that. So that's Travis and and Chris. Uh, uh, and so, yeah, you won't see everyone's message and you won't be able to chat with each other, I don't believe. It's only going to be when you send a chat message, it goes to our Zoom manager. Thank you so much. I just wanted to make sure I was doing it right. <laughs> of course. No, that's a good question. Mr. Miller, if you've ever been to a church picnic, you know that 400 people are just not going to be able to not say hello to one another. Amen. So I we're have. just going to make it so we're talking to one another. That's all. Totally understand. Thank you. You're welcome. So now I see that Linda Arrow has her hand raised. Uh, Linda, do you have a question for us? All right, Linda, uh, we'll unmute you. Hold on, we'll undo the unmuting and then you can speak. I'm watching for that little red button to go away. And for Deacon, yep, Deacon, did you do that? I've okay, sent great. you a request to unmute there, Miss Linda. All you have to do is click that button and it'll ask you to Okay, you can unmute yourself then and speak Linda Arrow. Okay, I cannot bring up the voting on my cell phone. And I've entered and re-entered about six times. Then we're going to definitely need to get you to get help from conference at Neep Synod, and they're probably going to call you. So just okay. send an email to them and let them know. They'll be in touch with eBallots and we'll work that out as an individual um, fix for you, okay? And okay. anyone else that's in that boat, if you're in that boat right now, please use that system. We're glad to help you. So uh, you'll be able to get, the reason we start with email is because we can get a flood of things and then we work as a staff backwards and getting those done as fast as we can. But it may end up with a phone call. That's why you're asked to put your phone number 
and who you are in your stuff when you send it out to us. Okay. So good question. And sorry for the problem. <laughs> I see, uh, it looks like uh, I see Sharon Littner on. Sharon, do you have a question for us? Yes, I do. Please give me um, your question. Okay, I obviously can get logged into the Zoom meeting, but we have been trying to get my husband logged in on his iPad and it's just not working. I type the whole address in and it says, Safari can't open this, the address is invalid. So what we're wondering is, is it possible for both of us just to watch on my computer, but when it's time to vote, can we cast two separate votes? Absolutely. So when you vote, you can vote using the voting system and the email that each of you got, because even if people share email addresses, they still got a unique addressed to them email. Uh, you could vote on the same computer if you wanted to, but you can vote on your phone and both of you watch and speak through this device that you're watching the Zoom on right now. So if your husband wanted to make a point of order, but you didn't, all you would need to do is have him ra raise your hand and then type in his name and whether you wanna speak for or against for something or if it's a point of order and we'll find him because he put his name in. That's the reason why we have asked you, even though it's like, we know your name, right? It comes up on the screen, but if you put your name in, there are a few of you that are working from the same Zoom. So it would be great to know the specific person in that location who has a question or uh, wants to make a point of order or is uh, wanting to speak for or against a resolution. Does that make sense? Thanks. That's well, all the always, questions I see for now, Bishop. It's so great to be with you. And this is very valuable. I know that we'll be continuing to answer questions because we'll get everybody on board and working this over the next two days. Um, but it's really great to have a great tech support. This is ours tech support. It's our own people. Uh, uh, Eric Gombert leading the, the charge on that here in the Senate office. We've got people like Deacon Travis. We've got uh, uh, Pastor Rachel Deeds. It's just, we're rich and, and blessed with so many great folks here. And I just hope that you can catch that spirit of knowing we're going to get through this together. And man, have we learned something new and amazing. And we're doing it a second time around. And so I'm really glad to be part of that with you and look forward to the next two days of us doing God's work together. Um, it's all part of whatever age we are, wherever we're at in life, we're growing young and vital because it's a state of mind. So let's do that together, all right? Uh, are, are we finished with our session? Uh, I'm going to pray for us then. Let's pray us out, all right? Let us pray. Good and gracious God, wow, you've given us tools to stay connected. You've gotten us through hellacious times. You have carried us through the wilderness and brought us to this place. Sure, we're not in the promised land yet, but you are making promises that you can keep to hold us together and to strengthen us. Bless every person on this Zoom and bless the work that we have to do and all the crew and behind the scenes people, bless them. We send you our love and we give you thanks and praise for what you have done in giving them to us. Make it all work, God. Make us all love and be patient with each other. But let us also struggle together to do this good work for your people, to bless all God's people on this territory and beyond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everyone. Good night. Watch for the recording. And we'll see you tomorrow. It is at uh, the Zoom signal will come on at 1.30. Uh, and we will start with uh, opening worship at 2 o'clock. So be in and a part of that. Uh, have your device ready for voting and uh, we will cue you through that as well. And then after opening worship from two uh, till just before three, we'll take a little break and come back on at three to begin uh, plenary one of our Senate Assembly. God bless you all and have a great night.